Coming up on Signal by Sony, we'll take a closer look at the new bloggy touch and see how it stacks up against the crowded landscape of MP4 cameras. And we head to Google's headquarters in Silicon Valley to get a behind the scenes look at the creators of Sony Internet TV and Google TV. Signal by Sony starts right now. Hey gang, I'm Melody. And I'm Anthony, thanks for joining us. In this show, Sony's given us some inside access to their latest gear. But we're not trying to make a sale here, we're trying to help you better get to know their products and hopefully make some informed shopping decisions. Right, but first we're gonna kick things off with a very common debate. The pocket camcorder versus the smartphone. Which one is better for taking photos and videos? Now, these days, we're getting a lot better stills and even HD video from our cell phones. So you might be wondering, why would you even want to buy a pocket camcorder? Well, there are actually a few good reasons, especially if you're doing a ton of video blogging or taking lots of video of your family, your vacations, or whatever. Pocket camcorders are relatively inexpensive devices with dedicated hardware for shooting video and photos. So the interface and design is more camera specific because it's a camera, not a phone, right? And the video quality is generally better than you can get on a smartphone. Right now, smartphones generally record at 720p, but the landscape is quickly changing. So let's get our hands on some of the most popular pocket camcorders that are out right now. Here we have the Kodak Play Touch and the Flip Slide HD, and of course, Anthony, will you do the honors? The Sony <laughs> Bloggy Touch. That's the sound that it makes when you open up this box. Every time, too. Now, all three of them have, of course, a lot of similarities. All three have three-inch touch screens. They're pretty similar in size and weight. Um, and all of them have internal rechargeable lithium-ion batteries. And it's really nice because all three of them have um, onboard HDMI out. Right. Uh, and of course, each one has its own set of features that some might prefer over mm -hmm. the others. But here's what we like about the Bloggy Touch. First of all, it has a 12.8 megapixel still image. See, the Flip Slide HD doesn't have still photo capabilities, and the Kodak Play Touch only takes 5.3 megapixel photos. Also, the Bloggy is the only one that captures video and photos simultaneously. Secondly, with HD recording, the Flip only records at 720p. The Kodak and the Sony both record at 1080. The Bloggy is the only one that uses the entire three inch screen area when you're shooting video and photos. Yeah, I was actually really surprised to see that when I was using the Flip HD, um, you know, you've got this big, beautiful three inch touch screen and yet you're only able to view the image of what you're, shoot what you're shooting um, on that like third of the screen and the rest of it is used for nav on totally. the touch screen. Um, now, another thing that I like about the Bloggy is the really nice, sophisticated design. It uses metal, um, which I much prefer over the plastic, and it has a capacitive touchscreen that uses glass um, over the flip slide, which has a resistive touchscreen. Yeah, and the flip slide has a kind of a cool design where it flips and slides. Makes sense. Um, but then when you open it up, you really, the only thing you can do with this is just navigate through your videos. You can't actually um, film with it or anything. Kind of a bummer. Sony uh, removed the card slot and added eight gigs of internal memory in order to keep the bloggy touch small and sleek as compared to previous bloggies. They also removed some of the things that previous bloggy models had, like a mic jack. And actually, the Play Touch, the Kodak one, does have the mic jack, but it's $30 more. And uh, if you don't need the mic jack, then, you know, it's not really that necessary. Um, it seems kind of strange for me on a camera that's that small yeah. to have a mic jack because your mic is most likely going to be bigger than your camera, yeah. <laughs> which is kind of weird. It removes the pocketable part of it Yeah, a little bit. And uh, actually, the Kodak Play Touch only has 128 megabytes of internal memory, so you also have to buy an external SD card for it. Um, so you'll have a little bit of research that you need to do to decide what are the extra features worth to you. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, now, the one drawback we should mention with all MP4 cameras is that they don't have external flashes, so it's very hard to record in low-light environments like nightclubs. And just to clarify some confusion out there about the Blocky Touch working with the Mac, the device's hardware does work 100% with the Mac, uh, but its companion software is for the PC only. Now, Sony expects to have a Mac version this year, but you can still play or edit the Bloggy's video files with any program for Mac that supports MP4, like iMovie. Yeah, it was. I mean, it's no problem. I even I was playing around the office with it. I was shooting a bunch of stuff, and I just popped in the USB, and I didn't even use the, the software that comes with it. Yeah, personal yeah. preference. Yeah. So last but not least, let's talk about price point for all three devices. The Kodak Play Touch goes for $229, while the Flip Slide HD uh, retails for $249, making the Bloggy Touch at eight gigabytes $199, which is actually the least expensive one. And for four gigs, you can get it for $179. 
Yeah, they've even got some exclusive colors and free engravings, so check that out. All right, switching gears completely now. As you probably know, Sony Internet TV launched last month, both a TV line and a Blu-ray disc player that features Google TV. And ever since then, there's been a lot of hype all across the net. Well, in an effort to feed your hunger for information on Sony Internet TV and Google TV, I took a field trip to the Google offices in Mountain View, California. So I'm here with Peter Sherman from the uh, Google TV product team. Thanks for joining us. My pleasure. And uh, congratulations on the product launch. You guys are coming out big. Thank you very much. Uh, explain to anybody who isn't aware yet, just give an overview of what Google TV does. Sure, uh, it's very simple. Um, Google TV is a bit like having an Android phone. So it's the operating system that uh, runs your TV. And some people might say, well, why do I need an operating system? Well, it's because we're actually bringing the web and apps to your TV, and you need a kind of common platform across different TV manufacturers to make that happen. That's what Google TV is. There are specific apps available as well. Can you, can you talk a little bit about how those work? Because the um, operating system is built on Android, uh, we can uh, run any Android phone app on your television. We are waiting to launch the Android market until 2011, because there are some pretty big differences between your phone and your TV. So uh, that's what we're kind of working on right now is to, to find out what uh, ports a uh, phone app to the television. Okay, so how is that different from something like an Apple TV? Okay, good question. So Apple TV is a separate device. Uh, you plug it into your TV and you either watch regular TV or you have to go and you change your input device, your input, and you have Apple TV coming in the other input. Mm -hmm. And they have a kind of small selection of um, uh, web uh, movies and, uh, and websites. Whereas with um, Google TV, it's uh, the main distinction is it's totally integrated. So you no longer have to think, oh, do I want to watch this on regular TV or do I want to watch this on the web? It's, it's totally integrated. And the other uh, big difference is rather than it just being a small portion of the web, you know, a couple of sites, yeah. iTunes and so forth, uh, you can actually um, enable access to any site on the web. Uh, we have um, uh, a full Chrome browser. We have Flash, which means that we can play any web video. Oh, so wow. it's it's the whole web totally integrated with your TV. And we've got the uh, the actual Sony Internet TV here. Mm -hmm. And you guys, obviously, you make software. And yeah. you're, you're partnering up with people to make hardware. Mm -hmm. and, and obviously, when you release something this big, you probably had a lot of people come to you asking to partner. What made you decide to go with Sony as one of your partners? Yeah. Uh, we chose Sony uh, as a launch partner because of just you know the, the great history with their manufacturing TVs, the global presence. And and you know they're uh, really forward thinking about uh, about the web and uh, bringing all that content onto your TVs. So I've heard a lot of conflicting reports about networks, uh, things like NBC, Hulu, stuff like that. But I've heard you can and you can't get them on Google TV. What's going on there? Um, so I just want to kind of uh, correct a, a misconception, which is um, you can definitely get uh, CBS and access to any TV channel on your Google TV. Um, you know, you subscribe to it through your cable provider, you can access it. It's true that some of the networks have uh, blocked access to their websites, and so. So, um, and you know, they're perfectly within their rights to do that. We, as a platform, are open and you can access any site on the web. Mm -hmm. And from time to time, some will choose to not allow access to their site as they just try and work out how that affects their uh, business models and um, their revenue. And so we're in constant discussions with these guys, uh, trying to explain um, how this affects their, uh, their models and you know, trying, to, trying to remedy this situation. You know, these, these are first generation models of the hardware, yeah. right? Um, when things like this, when functions get added in the future, you know, a lot of people kind of wait for, I'm going to get the second generation, I'm going to get the update. Yeah. I mean, would you, do you have to wait to get Google TV? You, you shouldn't, there's no need to wait at all. And this is definitely a mindset that people need to change, because it used to be when you bought a bit of uh, a hardware like this, then what you bought was what you had, and you were yeah. stuck with it. But because this is web-based, um, we can constantly update it. And it's I think the same with the PS3, you, know, you mm -hmm. send the firmware update over the web, the same will be true for Google TV. Um, so say so you bought this on the first day, three years time somebody buys a brand new uh, Google TV, the operating system will be exactly the same. Well, I'm very excited to see what kind of stuff is coming out in the future, man. This looks really, really awesome. Cool. Thanks so much for being with us. My pleasure. Okay, sticking with the subject of cutting edge TV technologies, we get a lot of questions about 3D TV. Oh yeah, but there are common misconceptions about 3D, so we're gonna take this time to clear things up for you. We've boiled it down to five questions that we hear a lot coming from people. So, let's start with 3D TV question number one. Do Sony 3D TVs display everything in 3D all the time? No, not at all. 
Sony's 3D HD TVs can play back everything you'd expect them to play back, like any other, any other TV. HD content, standard content, plus 3D TV broadcasts, 3D Blu-ray discs, and 3D games, with the right 3D home setup, of course. And naturally, that leads us to question number two. Do I need additional equipment besides a 3D HD TV? Well, that depends. Uh, for just HD or standard def TV movies and games, you don't need anything else other than your usual DVD cable or Blu-ray disc setup. But if you're looking to play back 3D content on a Sony 3D HD TV, then you'll need a few things. Uh, the 3D Sync transmitter, if the TV doesn't have one built in. Sony's active shutter glasses, which I like to put on for no reason at all times. Because they look awesome. Thank you very much. A high-speed HDMI cable to play back movies or games, and a device that supports 3D Blu-ray disc playback or 3D gaming, like a PS3. And any PS3 will work right up to the original models, which is great. And of course, you're gonna need a 3D content, like a 3D game or Blu-ray disc. Now, Sony's 3D HD TVs do upconvert some 2D content to 3D, but it's kind of like a sugar substitute. It's good, but it's not as good as the real thing. Okay, so here's question number three. Can I watch 3D content on my existing TV if I just wear the glasses? In short, no. Sony's 3D capable TV requires additional processing and hardware. So this includes hardware capable of displaying the left and right images in the proper sequence and the IR transmitter that's needed to sync the glasses to the content that you see on the screen. So that means your existing Sony TV won't be able to play back 3D content. But if you're looking for a Sony 3D HD TV, there are some pretty good deals um, right now if you check them out at SonyStyle.com. Now moving on to 3D TV question number four, why do Sony TVs with 3D playback require you to wear those glasses? Okay, so instead of splitting the resolution of a single frame between your left and your right eye, Sony TVs send an entire frame to your left eye and then an entire frame to your right eye. So they do this because they can give you all the resolution and image quality to the receiving eye, which creates that high definition, clear 3D image. In order to do this, the TV has to tell the glasses to block one eye so you don't see the frame meant for the correct eye. It does this like at really insane rates like this, so the brain is thinking that it's one image. Now Sony chose this technology because it's the best way to provide a 3D HD experience in the living room while also allowing a wide viewing range to enjoy it. So finally we come to our last question. Aren't 3D TVs more expensive than HD TVs? You know, there's a modest price premium for the usual living room size of about 40 to 46 inches. Now for a 60 inch TV or higher, yes, they do cost quite a bit more. So if you're trying to keep costs down, but you still want 3D, stick to a 46 inch TV or below. But overall, Sony's 3D TVs cost anywhere from about $1,600 to just around $4,300. And if you're looking for a good deal, just go to sonystyle.com slash 3D deals. All right, so those are just a few of the questions we get most often, but you might have a few of your own. If so, feel free to post your questions and comments at sony.com slash signal, and we'll try to get some answers answers for you. And be sure to visit the site to check out links of all the products featured in this show too. Anyway, that's all we have time for today. We hope you learned a thing or two. For now, this is Melody and Anthony signing off on Signal. We'll see you next time. Goodbye. <laughs>